Hello traders, good morning. Welcome to another live bookmap webinar. Today we're joined by Scott Pulsini, a professional futures trader with a ton of experience in bookmap and order flow trading. This session is held every Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time and forms part of our free education here at Bookmap. Once we get going, feel free to ask questions. You can use the YouTube chat or the Advanced Webinar Discord channel. I'll do my best to get through them all. Uh, but before we jump into the live analysis with Scott, just need to run through a couple of things. You can find out more about Scott on his website, scottpulsinitrader.com. And you can connect with him on Twitter, scottpulsinitr1. Any questions that I missed today, feel free to reach out directly to Scott with an email, scott at scottpulsinitrader.com. And the disclosure. All Bookmap Limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Trading futures, equities and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay, Scott, are you there, sir? Yes, you hear me? Yes, I hear you. How are you? Awesome. Let me show my screen here. <clears throat> there you got my screen. Okay, yep. You're good to go, Scott. Okay, cool. Gold stock stock by GC. 514 contracts. All right, so um, there was some large ice that came in here. Right after the open, you can see, actually, there was, actually it wasn't even that, no, um, that wasn't the threshold. So the, these four I made into one pretty large zone. This is almost a 10 point zone. You can see here, um, so it's my thresholds, meaning the amount of size that I will trade off on this uh, sub chart here. 700 is my threshold for ES. This was 755, another close to 700 on a, 800 right so that's like 2200 and then he had this as well another 700 so this is almost 3000 buy ice in this area that obviously is very important um i actually I had to run downstairs and i missed this i should already be short this market <clears throat> because of the way i trade these um setups is i can either aggressively or conservatively off of the volume setup. So aggressive would be the minute this moves 110% of a five minute ATR outside of here, I will short it or I will wait for a, a full ATR, a retest of failure and I will short it. I actually would have been short right here. So I'd be going through this torture right now. I'm not short yet. You know, there was ECB guy talking right now and a Fed dude I think is still chirping. So, um, you know, tell my room all the time, you can take trades during, during that, but you are subjecting yourself to these algos that that fire off off their keywords and if they say one thing that's you know counter to the trade you can be out of the trade so you know when these guys are talking you may want to elect not to trade the problem is they talk non-stop all day every day it's unbelievable i don't remember this ever in my you know 25 year trading career that these fed guys would just talk one after another after another every single day so it's um it's a little annoying to tell you the truth. I mean, it, it is what it is, but I, you know, what is the point of the beige book and everything else if they just talk nonstop? It's like, it's just, I can't tell you how much money I've lost on, you know, them saying something, you know, you have these algos that are, that are keyed to these keywords, right? So, um, for instance, like I got stopped out, I was in a, one of my reversion trades a little bit ago and 
this is the in my trade room this is the squat box we look at um you can see here this uh where was it uh, jp morgan right here this it's just, I, you guys, this is trading. This is what happens. These are markets, but and you've got to accept it. But I had a trade on, and then that comes out, and I was short, and the market just rips right through my stop, right? So that's why you need to put stops in and, and, and follow your rules because you never know. And I'm sure I'll get into this rant like I do every webinar because rule number one, the five truths of trading, anything can happen, right? So... Well, I'm sure we'll go down the rant road a little later. Uh, but anyway, you can see he's still, he hasn't, there hasn't really been a headline for about an hour, but uh, I'm sure he's still chirping. Let's see. Let's see what else we got today. Yeah, so today is actually pretty light. We only had Collins, ECB, and then we got another ECB. These are my times. So these are, uh, that's 11 Central. And then you got another 1215 Brainerd. That's actually an oxymoron, by the way, Brain. Get it? Okay, so um, I joke all the time just because it's, these Fed guys are pretty unbelievable, the stuff that they come out and say, but I digress. All right, so this is trading here. You know, I will short this. I'm not, I, I caught this. So this PL is from a short from overnight that we took in my trade room yesterday, right at the close, um, or right, the setup was right at the close. And I said, it was basically like this. It was a broken ice setup. And I said, if this market traded, uh, it, was, it was a Titanic, or it was a setup, but it was broken ice, it was buy ice, and it moved below, and I said, if it, you know, retest fails, I'm going to go short, my stop's going to go above, and that's what I did, and held it all night, obviously, I can't watch it overnight, that's the one, you know, obviously a major risk of trading overnight, one, headlines, two, you know, you, if something new happens, the way I trade, right, so if I'm short, so I was short overnight, well, is that market's moving down, actually, we can look at that on my other book map, because there were... There were instances where there were um, more setups, but I just wasn't watching, obviously, because I was sleeping. But, um, you know, what I tell my trade room guys, because we got a bunch of guys from Europe in there as well, but people are always asking, you know, what's the, what are the thresholds for overnight trade? And I usually say, you know, unless you're seeing high relative volume overnight, which actually this was here, so you can see this, right? So this is a... Um, not all trading platforms have this. I don't know why. This is Sierra chart. This is showing you this exact time of day for the last 30 days. That's the kind of relative volume I want to see. You know, think or swim relative volume and a lot of these trading platforms, they don't have that, that, that availability. I don't know why it's so basic, but this, this relative volume is just showing you the prior six, it's basing the relative volume based on the prior 60 bars. So obviously every day at the open, you're gonna get a spike in relative volume because it's based on prior 60 bars overnight, right? So it's usually about seven to eight times normal. That's normal. And you can see this was seven times normal. So I don't use this one. I don't think that's useful unless you know every time period, I was telling my room this yesterday, every time period, what, what normal is, right? So I know seven times is normal on this chart. It's like, this just a big pain in the, you know what? So this tells me more. So you can see at the open, there was no spike because it's basically normal for this time period for the last 30 days. So there was um, there was some activity here. So I probably would have used normal thresholds um, for this trade I had on. But if the trade, you know, if you're trading overnight, you can use most of the time half thresholds. So, you know, instead of 500 stop runs, you can use 500 um, I'm sorry, but instead of 500, you can use 250, and then the ice, you can instead of 700, you can use 350. So you can see here actually, this was. Actually, I didn't see any of this. So I definitely would have drawn. I started this before I went to bed, but I probably would have added to this trade on this. You get some more events here right around uh, midnight, my time, one in the morning. That's right around the Eurex, Eurex open. But my point is, you know. When you have an overnight trade on, there's stuff that's going to fire off. And the way I trade is I will trail my stop based on that new setup, right? So that is the danger. But I, the night before, I was short as well, and I got stopped out. I got short right at the at the end of my PM webinar on my on my uh, in my trade room. Same thing, and I got stopped out because Bank of Japan came out and and um, announced the rate decision, right? And I actually was sitting here and I knew that was coming, and I rolled the dice just because I had a strong feeling this was going to happen 
Um, but this, because we saw so much activity in this little balance area, and so this is, you know, we'll get into this a little more, but you know, when you're just staring at a bar chart, you just look at this, you're like, oh yeah, that's a little balance area, and then we'll see what happens here. There was massive size in this area, like huge icebergs, buy, sell, stop runs, all in this little area. And I told my trade room, when this breaks, this thing is going to go down. I don't want to wake up and see this is down 100 points because I I want to be involved. So I got short, like right here, right at the close here. And then the Bank of Japan came out at like 8 o'clock by time and stopped me out. And then my trade room yesterday, and then we actually, I actually did take a long year. This was not a good trade because we were into these resistance zones. We'll talk about that. But anyway, I got out and I ended up getting short for this move. And then overnight, I caught that move. So I knew this was coming the first try. I got stopped out because of overnight um, Bank of Japan stuff. But when is the money is just as green overnight, but you, you got to know if you're not going to be sitting there watching it, you, you, you're um, exposing yourself to. Know, new setups and news, so on and so forth. But anyway, this worked out, and you can see we use these. This is the second most powerful thing that I've ever used in my futures trading, and are the Ludwig levels. Talk about these at every webinar, too. And I literally shorted here right at overnight. It was actually right in here at the close. And then I put my um, put my exit right in front of the slug, and I got filled. So that's what I was shooting for, and I got it. But you can see this thing bounced right off the lug. So Again, they're Ludwig Levels. <clears throat> I get emails all the time about them. Just go to her website, ludwiglevels.com. The website's from 1972. I make fun of her all the time. She really doesn't care. She says it does its does its job. Uh, but she's got a uh, three free three-day trial on there. You just do the trial. Say you saw, there, saw it on Bookmap, and you get uh, special pricing for that. You can try them out. But they are, they are unbelievable, especially when you can put volume events, real-time volume events, which is the driver of my trading at these levels, it's, there's nothing better in, in, in my 20 years of experience. So what I was gonna, what I was getting at here is I'm about to go short this market. <clears throat> Actually, let me, I'm gonna delete this real quick. I'm gonna make sure this uh, ATR is correct. So I trade, we'll go over this here, but um, current ATR in here has now spiked to 6.49. It should be if I want to short this market 1475. So this is not the best. I'm going to try this. I just missed it, of course. That doesn't matter. Actually, I will short this now. I'm okay with this because now I can trail my stop based on this new setup. So why I was reluctant to shorting right here is because the same thing would happen overnight. These lugs, I do not. I do not make a habit of trying to short into the support lug or go long into the resistance lug. These are called the major lugs, the red and the blue. And then you can see different colors as their baby lugs, but when they're all on top of each other, they're very powerful. That's why stuff like that happens. So I'm basically shorting right now with not much room before it goes in the slug and this can easily bounce off again, right? I'm okay. I, I was, you know, I wanted to, I want to put on a trade for the webinar. Um, and I'm okay shorting this even now because now I have a new setup and I don't have to risk an ATR above this zone. We'll go over these rules here shortly. But now this new setup came in, so I can now cut my risk down substantially. So let's just hurry up and, and or add to this trade. And hopefully we'll get into that. If this breaks, we can add to this trade. So the way you want to draw these zones is use your little crosshair guy up here. Um, you got to go into edit mode on here, right? And you can do your hotkeys. I got a hotkey set up finally after like three years because Rick never told me how to do that. He loves when I tell him that. Um, so you want to find where the spike started. I take my bubbles off because these threw me off. I drew my zones wrong for about three years there too. They weren't perfectly accurate. If you take this off, they are accurate. Sorry, I got my book map going on both uh, computers, so that's why you're hearing the echo. Anyway, to get this line, just right click, configure visible components, last price, and then you can get the last price line, and it'll help you draw your zones way more accurately. So you can see here, you just go to where this spiked and start it right about there, and then you want to incorporate all the prices that happen in that zone. So again, I got to scroll over, so I'm just going to draw this now, and I'm going to have to adjust it. Let's just change. I use uh, yellow for stops. Yellow and white for stops, blue for buy ice, black for sell ice, just so I know that the uh, type of setup it is. So that's that. Um, actually, I drew that pretty well for not even looking at it. So let's see. So you can see this spiked all the way down to this price, 
I'm still during this threshold spike. My threshold for stops is 500. So move that down. The bottom of the zone is 39.13. The top of the zone is uh, 39.15. So we have this spreadsheet that we're using in my trade room. It has been a godsend. The guys in my room have helped me build this thing, uh, build it out for the reversion trade we're doing. This is more of a scalping type trade. You can learn all about that in my room. I'm not doing those types of trades on these webinars. I'm doing position trades. Um, but what you do is we enter the zone prices in here and my short-term memory is horrific, 39.15. They're not something that I'm on the other computer, but, um, and then I put in the current ATR. What ATR am I using? I'm using the standard Thinkorswim. It's a 14-period Wilder's ATR. You can set up, you know, different platforms that have different ATRs. This is what I use. It's just, this is the default, um, ATR and I think the five minute is the best ATR to be using for my trading style, right? So obviously it changes as the market around, but it's usually pretty stable. You could use longer term, like for instance, this is an hourly ATR. It's 16.89, right? I, for the way I trade, I'm a day trader. I not, do I want to risk, you know, an ATR of 17 points? No, I don't need to. I mean, if you're, if you're taking bigger trades, then yeah, you can use that, but I'm using this as a day trader. So Anyway, now with this new zone, <clears throat> it's showing me if I were to go short off of this new zone, which I will add to this trade, um, potentially 3906, I can stop out at 3922. So now I've, I've um, reduced my risk substantially. Hopefully I'm not stopped out yet, or I would have been stopped out. So now this original zone, I didn't even put this in because I wasn't filled, but I just got filled now. I would have had my stop in ATR plus 10% above that. Now I can move this all the way down to an ATR above ATR plus 10% of this zone, which is now 22, right? So you can see that it's, that is um, cutting my risk down substantially. I could put this in. I don't know why it's not giving me this. It's like literally skipping the price that I want to put the order in. That's good enough there. All right, so, so now if I get stopped out, it's a small loss on the next setup, right? So that is the beauty. So you can see I'm not, even if this was moving in my favor, I'm not trailing my stop because, all right, so stopped out on that. That was, you know, I took a shot there. It didn't work. Now this is actually a bullish setup, right? Why is this a bullish setup? You guys, this, the reason this is moving like this, this guy is obviously still talking, right? So this is the risk you take when these clowns are talking nonstop all day, every day, right? Um, so and you can just tell when, when the way this, yes, does not trade like this. this. It looks like the NASDAQ right now, right? If anybody watches the NASDAQ, it's trading like this because somebody's saying something, right? This is what you open yourself up to if you trade while guys are talking. Um, but anyway, that, so putting in the values here, this tells me, and I can use my other, um, strategy to just tell me if it got an ATR out of the zone. So an ATR, I already know that because I stopped out. So an ATR out of that zone was 2150. So I judge how I'm going to trade these setups if how they react to the zone, meaning if they can get an ATR. So this one did. This is obviously, he just said something bullish. Um, I'm not definitely not, it wasn't going to trade this aggressively, but if this goes like this, retest this zone, fails, I will get in at 110% of an ATR, basically right where I stopped out of this trade, right? So this is the newest volume event. The way I trade, as long as this isn't threshold here, no, is I revert to the newest volume event and then I take trades off of that. So we're kind of in no man's land. Let's kind of back up and get into the bigger picture stuff. <clears throat> this is kind of in the middle of nowhere as far as my zones. Um, so I draw my zones based on the four important areas of charting, tops and bottoms of balance areas, high volume nose of balance areas, directional conviction, buying and selling tails, right? So I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to get this done today or tomorrow. I'm going to have a subscription to these zones. I, I watch like 15 different, uh, 17 different products, whatever it is. So you can see on my room here and I post these every day. So if you remember my trade room, you get these for free, but I will have a pretty cheap subscription. I think it'll be like 34 bucks a month or something um, where you can get all these zones every day where you don't have to draw them yourself, right? So you just click on, you'll just, you'll have access to the Google Drive here and then you just click on the zones and then you can, these zones on your own chart right but it's just say it's going to save you a lot of time especially if you're watching multiple markets this takes me like an hour to do every day 
But anyway, you get all of the, you'll get all these products in the subscription and or you can join my trade room and get them for free. So anyway, these are extremely important zones. I tell my trade room all the time, if you just wait for volume setups in these zones, you would be a extremely profitable, successful trader, right? Problem is most people can't, like right now, I'm, I'm about to make a trade here and it's right in the middle of nowhere, right? So it's like, that's the beauty. If you're watching multiple markets, you can just sit back and wait for either playbooks, which we'll get into. Like I showed this last week. This is my dad dad playbook. I just released this to the room. Um, and what I'm going to do one a week for them. Um, I have about 400 in my brain that I trade, but you know, you need to get this stuff down on paper and then you start keeping track of it. So we'll go over this a little later if that uh, sets up. Anyway, playbooks and or zones, and you just scan the markets waiting for those opportunities, right? That, like it, we could say it all the time, like a sniper. You're just sitting here waiting to blow someone's head off with your trade, right? waiting for the ideal trade location to put your trades on. And then not just that, right? So, I mean, anyone could draw these zones, right? It just takes practice and it takes time, but you can draw the zones, but there's, you know, when... I want to know, like, when this does this, it goes right through it. Well, what happened there? Well, you're going to understand majority of the time what happened there. There was most likely a volume event that failed. And the way these markets not only support and resistance, I mean, you can you can fade these zones on first moves into them, so on and so forth. But how the market trades at these zones also gives you information on what's going on in the day. So if this thing, you know, screws around in here and goes right through this zone, that is telling you something is up because it, it should at least react in this zone. So we see it all the time. Like for instance, this one came yesterday. This one did react in the zone. It tried to hold, tried to hold. But I told my trade room, this is the exact thing I told them yesterday. I said, heads up here. I said, because this zone was drawn from, remember the four important areas of trading. Here's a buying tail. Here's a little tail. Directional conviction out of here, right? So that's why that zone was drawn. It came down here. What was the difference between this and this versus this? Well, this one, it accepted. And it just sat here for a couple hours. And I said, that is telling you something's up. On top of that, I don't draw the zones most of the time for um, high volume nodes. Sometimes I do, I'll show you NASDAQ when I, I actually have it in there. I left it in there because it is the high volume node. But this was telling you, first of all, this was, this was yesterday. This was a fail breakout. Actually, I got long here. This was a terrible trade because I should have waited for this to clear these important resistance zones. But besides that, and did that, I actually did get short here. So that was a fail breakout. That's my favorite trade. And then the bigger, I, this is another balance. Balance areas are just two-sided traded where, where traders are placing bets. Longer term traders, shorter term traders, right? All these guys thought they had it. Then it sits here for days. All these guys thought they had it, and then it does that. Well, if you are the big trader in here, what are you doing when you see that and you see that? Get me the hell out of the trade. If you're the big trader in here and you see that and that, what are you doing? Get me the hell out of the trade. And that's what fail breakouts do. And this is exactly what should happen when that happens. So <clears throat> does this always happen? No, but then that gives you information as well. So if this market were to yesterday have done that, that, got through there and then recovered, I would have, I tell, I say this every day, when what you expect to happen doesn't happen, the opposite move is multiple. So if that market would have held and done that, then the move, move that I expected here, it would have been three, four times the other way because of what didn't happen. So it may be confusing to some of you, but it's all about coming up with a thesis and understanding how the markets react to these, to these um, market, um, <clears throat> market structure areas and then coming up with the thesis and then waiting for your real-time volume in the direction of that trade right? or the direction of your thesis so anyway right now we're just sitting here balancing um i'm waiting i will <clears throat> i don't have a strong conviction here and if i was smart you know, if i'm sitting here by myself and i'm not on a webinar right now i would say you know what i don't really want to mess around in no man's land there's we're not in this zone or not in that zone i'll just wait for one of these but we are here this could just sit here for days now who knows but and as I do have a volume event, we are, this actually long is actually not a bad long. I still embarrass this market, but I'm a day trader. This is not a bad long because of very, very important things that I use, right? So this comes back and retests the zone This is, that I just drew, that stop run zone. It's pretty close to that log. I can see this thing ripping back up, screwing all the shorts like it always does first, right? And then moving back up to that last 
zone up here, this white zone here. Right, so this this zone is still important. I had it drawn. I was going to erase it today. Um, it was this gap up, and this led to this. <clears throat> but you can see we closed right in it and gapped out of it. So this is still important. I could see this market coming back up into here again, screwing all the shorts, maybe all the way even up to here. You could even make this one bigger balance now too, and going. Okay. Or even maybe the high volume note and then going. You don't know what's going to happen. You use real-time volume events to tell you. So point is, this is a long setup right here. I would go long. We'll see. I'm not going to go short off of this setup. Why? Well, because it already got an A-tier out of here, and that's what disqualifies. That's how I disqualify the setups and determine whether they're bullish or bearish based on if it's able to push an ATR. This obviously got whatever this was, whatever he said, that's what caused that. That stopped me out of my short. Right? That was definitely, it was like two ATRs. And this is actually the trade we're taking in my room as well. If this retest fails, I'll go along. <clears throat> I already know. And then, you know, we look at structure to come up with thesis, blah, blah, blah. Well, we know too, somebody, some big entity here has been buying in this area, right? So this goes here, 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 I'll go along. And I already know these guys are kind of backing me as well. And they may come in even harder and they may start to push us as this runs away here. So I'm my point is I'm okay with going long in this area. I don't have a strong conviction. Different areas, like for instance, yesterday, I had a big problem with going long. Once that happened, I would not have gone long right there. Here, in the middle of nowhere, zone-wise, this can do anything right here. Right? So now if this goes like this and goes right through here, Say the setup happened right here. Would I want to go long there? No, because I just we just talked about how it reacts to the zone. This melts right through this zone coming up. I do not want to go long right there, right? So here, not a big deal as far as uh, where we're at. I will take the long. It's just now I'm just sit and wait. I am waiting for a retest of the zone and failure. So this is the this is where you have to have some discretion or decision making, right? Most of my stuff is pretty black and white as far as the rules. You know, how we trade these areas, where you put your stops, so on and so forth. But you have to determine for yourself whether you want to get in aggressively, meaning right when I... So th these are my rules, right? I force this market to get an ATR. If I'm going to go long aggressively off of the stop zone, I force this market to get an ATR plus 10% out of the zone. Then I'll, that's the aggressive entry. Or I wait for the ATR retest failure. That's the conservative entry. This is a higher percentage trade. Works out. I, again, these are I don't have the exact stats from watching thousands and thousands and thousands of these. I'd say this is a 70% trade or better. There's the problem with this trade. Well, you may not you may not get it. What if this market doesn't retest and it just goes like that? Well, that's why where you have to make the decision. Are you going to wait for a retest or are you going to get in right when it breaks out of the zone? That's what you have to decide based on what you look at, so on and so forth. So uh, this zone is in the middle of nowhere, and here comes the, the guys. I can't tell you. This is why we have a trade like this in my room that actually reverts back to the zone because it happens so often, right? So, so my my rules for a retest is within 10% of an ATR. So meaning if this gets within 10% of an ATR to the top of the zone, meaning it go like so. ATR right now is what seven? It's up to 7.03. So that's seven tenths of a point right so if this got three quarters of if this went to 13 and three quarters I consider that a retest right sometimes a lot of times it comes all the way back to the zone but i'm saying if it did that 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 well then i would put my long order in and so that did not happen yet so we just sit here and wait this is just algos guys when the big money is not playing then the algos start taking your cash and they they know nothing's going on in this area so that's when they start doing that to you right how many guys are even in a trade now that have, are being tortured? No matter which way you've been since this webinar, if you have a trade on right now, you have been tortured both ways. If you were short and you held it, I got out per my rules, but if you held it, you had to go through that. Then you think you got it. And then you don't. Then you do. Then you don't. Then you do. Right? Same thing if you're long. Oh, yeah, I got this. No, I don't. Yeah, I do. No, I don't. What do you think that is? Don't you think that these algos, these firms build these algorithms knowing traders one can't handle this. Two trail do the so you get long on this move. You're like, oh yeah, the the Fed the Fed clown said something positive. I'm I'm long, and they're like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna move my stop to break even. Stopped out. Right? Oh, hey, here we go. Now it's going. I'm gonna move my my stop to break even. Stopped out. Know this. 
and they know when nothing's going on, they can take your cash. That's if you think there's something different happening in here, you are sadly, sadly mistaken, right? So the big money are the algos worst nightmares, right? Because they play their games 80, 80, 90, even more percent of the time. When the big money comes in, it disrupts them, right? And they're, they're, that's all built in their trade plan, right? It's like they know this is going to happen probably 20, 10 to 20% of the time the big money is going to play. They factor that in. They take their loss because they get run over, and then they write back to whipsawing, right? So that's if you understand that, there's so many things you're going to – they're going to open up for you. One, you're not panicking on this. That's why. Why do you think I place? So if I were to say short on that, why do you think I place my stop and ATR out of that zone? So I don't have to be stopped out on nonsense when nothing is going on. All right. That's a little bit of a rant. <clears throat> um, so I'm still waiting for a retest here. What did I say? Did I say 1375? I'm sorry. I meant 1375. That got real close. Top of that zone is at 15. Save it down there by one tick. <clears throat> it didn't, so it did not retest, technically retest the zone by one tick. So I'll, I'll, I'll be patient here and wait. Um, let's look at NASDAQ. Bigger picture. While we watch paint dry. So. This is an example how, remember I said I don't draw zones and high volume nodes. Well, I left this, this was from stuff over here, selling tail, directional conviction down, I left it in. There was a bunch of stuff that happened here, but then it started trading through it. So once you start trading through the zones back and forth, well, they're no longer like important. Right? This is one of them, but I left it. Why did I leave it? Because when you draw this balance area, that is right in the middle of it, AKA H, B, N, high volume node. It's where the most trade occurred in a balance area, right? So I left it there, and you can see this market reacted to it yesterday, came down, bounced. That's corn, I'm not trading corn right now. It's like they talk about watching paint dry. Anyway, this comes here, and we closed right here. Why is this room still, this zone still relevant? Because we just gapped down out of there. So we tested that. I, these are all great areas to take shorts now. Now you can see we're just hanging in this zone. Right? So what? Just like yesterday, like I pointed out, in this zone, what is this kind of telling you? Yesterday, I just said talked about this. I said this zone was different this time. Rejection, instant rejection, instant rejection, that thing. What do you see here right now in NASDAQ? Same exact thing. This was rejection here, but this was ridiculous uh, this was a huge move out of here it's the rejection what are we doing now accepting right. does that mean we're gonna break no but it's got a very it's it's not snapping out of here it tried tried the first time down here right put in a buying tail well, why are we back here again why are why is it accepting these prices probably because it's going to zero so we joke about that every every day show my favorite uh i'll give her a little plug here because she's one of my favorites in my room puts this in every day because I because I, I wanted I've wanted these markets to go to zero for since COVID I thought they were going to but she puts this in there so I can find it real quick guys you got to have comedy in your training you got to laugh a little bit or you, you will lose your mind I have both I've already lost my mind right there zero <laughs> so <laughs> so every time I talk about the markets going to zero she puts that in so that's kind of it's kind of funny all right so anyway we're it's sitting right here and let's take take a look at the profile and lugs and so on and so forth so another thing here on es quickly why I'm, I'm still overall bearish i'll still go along here this is smack dab in the middle of this it's already gotten through the point of control as well but when markets accept in the market profile composites that these are just single days that are merged and the value area lines up right very very powerful as you can see how how important this one was and accept launched out of here Closed in here, and now it's back. It's it's actually in here. So when markets accept in the market profile composites, the high tendency is to get to the other side. So we are probably gonna get here today. Doesn't mean it's gonna happen right now. We may do one of these. Like I said, screw all the shorts and then go. But overall, this is looking like we're gonna make it at least down to this 3880 area. Okay. Um, that's my opinion, obviously, but that's what usually happens when you accept. 
So guys, it's all about, as far as thesis, bigger picture stuff, it's just, so we just talked about what should happen during failed breakouts, so on and so forth. Well, what should happen here? It should make it down here. If this market holds and it gets back out of here, something is up, you need to be re reassessing the short. I mean, your bearish, short-term intermediate bearish position, right? This should not, this should at least touch this before any kind of any, any kind of rally. If this holds here, pretty much right at this point of control and gets out of here, something's up. So this is how, this is what you do guys. It's just all day, every day trying to judge, you know, for the bigger picture. I'm still a day trader. I'll trade, you know, by the, for instance, like I just said, I'll go long here, but overall, I think this market is still gonna continue to get smoked, right? We're day traders, so we try to take advantage of the short-term uh, information. So actually, here's the retest of that zone before I get into the NASDAQ stuff. Not surprising, right there. The usual, same team, all day, every day, all markets. Same event, one was two ATRs, whatever the Fed clown said, back in here, this reverses, I will go long. If this breaks, will I go short? No, my sh this, this is disqualified from a short because I was able to get an ATR above there, right? Because I know this is fast and if you're just learning, I mean, I got guys in my trading room saying you're going too fast. Well, I'm trading live, first of all. Second of all, if you join my trading room, you get access to 500 webinar, prior webinars for the last two years where you can go and play it, stop it, draw your zones, understand what I'm saying. So if you're if you're not following along, it, it trust me, it, this is not rocket science, right? It's, it's very basic and it's very basic for a reason. I make my trading very simple because I, I've i learned the hard way, the more the more complicated you make it, the worse you're gonna do, right? I make it very simple and it is very simple. It's not easy, trading is not easy, but it's very simple. It's If you understand what's going on with these volume events and how traders are caught and how the, how the, how the market should react to these areas, you, you have an edge and this is the best edge I've ever seen in 25 years. I don't know if I ever mentioned that. All right, so this is trying to push through the zone now. We're down at this lug. Let's let's see what happens here. You should this moves a little lower. You're probably gonna see some stop runs because this is the overnight low. This is where I got out of my original short overnight. Uh, while we're waiting for that, any questions here, Sam? Yeah, we've we've got. I just uh, covered a ton. But. Yeah, more of a maybe a comment than a question. But um, Tom says seems like it's been consolidating until it has liquidity at the edge to break out on. So I think he's saying it. Is he is it waiting for liquidity to build up either on the the top side or bottom side before it it breaks out? Uh, so what what liquidity? <clears throat> I mean, there's liquidity down here, and it looks like that's where we're at. It. We talk about this every webinar, <clears throat> being magnet, uh, and then the other thing quickly. Uh, well, well, first, let me show this. So this is the new trader map um, add-on. If you have uh, Global Plus, which you should all have, because then you get the sweeps and everything else. It's well worth it. Um, so this is, let's just take a look at the trader map. So this is just a different view. That's not it. Let's see here. Going here, actually this is the footprint. They don't have that yet and they need to work on this because they don't have everything they need to have. But um, it's available in India. So if you want to move to India, you can get that indicator right now. But anyway, you can come in. I mean, look, look at that. Where, where do you think this market is going? It, you know, it may not happen today. It's probably going to happen today, but over the next couple of days, you know, this is right now, this, then this, and that's right down real close to the bottom of that market profile composite, right? It would not surprise me to see this hit all of this. I'll even do my standard golf bet. If you come to Arizona, I will bet you we tag all the way down to here before it even comes back. This is actually a pretty, pretty bold call here, but... I probably won't make that call for, for a round of golf. I'll say we go down. I'll say we tag 39. This 39.62 before we get up to. Um, I'd like to make it even money just because it's better odds for me, obviously. But I'd say before we get up here, we'll tag that. It's not saying much, but guys, this is just to help you. We've been talking about coming up with a thesis for the last 40 minutes, right? Come up with your thesis, then you bring this up. This is the most important stuff. And you're like, okay, where's all the liquidity? Well, yeah, there is a band up here, but what, where is it more likely to go right now? Well, how do you know likely which way it's gonna trade? Well, that's what we're using in real-time volume events, right? So yeah, it could rally up right now, but it's eventually gonna hit this, 
right? So I'm leaning more than leaning or hitting all of this. And then we just, you could just say, you know what? I see all this liquidity and this, you see this guy playing gains, putting it in, pulling it in. All this is set for, by the way, in ES. I set this just quickly to show you my settings for this. Uh, I have it set from 100 to 1,000. So it's only showing me, the only thing it's showing me is orders, um, entire orders that are 100 lots or more, right? That's important because these are the big players, right? And it's so funny because 100 lot is, back when I was scalping, 100 lot was nothing. Like it would be thousands. Now it's 100 because it's just it's just, you know, the book is so thin now, so on and so forth. But anyway, these are these are the the areas that this market is going to gravitate to. Why? Because the big money will push in there so they can get their fills. That's just the game. I mean, you can see this this liquidity is somebody's playing games here and they're on both sides of the, the thing. This is the stuff I don't really pay attention to. Um, but my point is coming up with a thesis, you come up with your thesis and you bring up your trader map and you're like, oh, yeah, OK, so I am bearish. And look at that. Look at all that size down there. Right. So that is another incredible thing that Bookmap has on top of everything else that they offer the trader. Again, guys, I, you know, if it wasn't for Bookmap, I would not be trading right now. So I tell you guys that story every every week, pretty much. Um, we'll get into that a little later. But <clears throat> so this is holding this zone. I will play this long here. And I know what some guys are probably saying. Well, you just said, look at the liquidity below. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's going there right this second. If it was that easy, you just bring up your chart. The minute the market opens, you sell it and watch it go to liquidity. Sometimes it does. This could bounce around, and we all know these equity markets, they love to screw people first, let them go, right? So that's why I use the real-time volume information to put my trades on, right? And I know how the market should be. Corn Corn's tempting me to trade it, but I just I just can't do it right now. Anyway, real-time volume event, just a stop run. It's not it, is it? No, it was over here was threshold this is what we drew right so let's say 300 what did i know 500 yeah that's my threshold exactly so we already saw this we saw this here's your retest if this gets out of here in atr i will go long if this gets below here then i'm waiting for a new setup because i can't go short off of this setup because it already went an atr out of there i already explained that so let's just make sure the thing is when you're waiting for this you've got to make sure you're updating your atr Right, so 6.70 now. Right, so let's see. It's not that big of a difference, but you'll see this should change, right? So if I'm going to go long here, I would be going long at 22 with this ATR when I change it. Quarter. So, you know, quarter is not a big deal, but it does make a difference for stops and so forth. So, <clears throat> the other thing why this spreadsheet is so incredible is you put in your account size, how much you want to risk per trade. You should never be risking more than 1.5 to 2% on your trades unless it's an A plus setup. We'll get into that probably, but um, this is telling me, I don't care what I'm risking, you adjust your size. You don't adjust your risk. And I'm gonna try my hardest not to go down this rant rabbit hole, but I can't tell you how many traders, I don't, I don't even wanna know how many traders are on this webinar that do it right now. I like to risk three points with my ES trade to make six. Guys, the market doesn't give a flying, you know what, what you wanna risk. The market cares about the volatility. So if the market, if the- I might trade some Russell. Um, if the if the ATR is at twelve, you're point, you're trading off a three point stop for good luck. You're not gonna you're just literally just pay PayPal me in my room your cash. Save yourself the trouble, right? We'll gladly take it because you're gonna lose your money. I'm telling you, you have to adapt to the volatility, and that's what this does. So right now, if I'm trading this with this ATR, I got to risk sixteen and a half points. Well, yeah, that's a lot, but with this, with this, you know, I, when I put on this trade, I think this can be multiples of this as a winner. So I think this can move at least two to one, three to one, four to one. But you can see if the ATR, which just was the other day, say it's at 12. Now I'm risking 28 points. Okay, I don't care about that. I just adjust my size. I could trade 1.4. Obviously, you can't cut the ma major, con the big contract. And the, then you trade micros, trade 14 micros. You should be trading the same way. If you are trading just one lot in or out, all all or all or none, you're doing yourself a disservice. Trade micros so you can piece out at important areas. That's another thing I have in here. We'll go over this too. So when I am right, <clears throat> I pay myself as the market makes money available. 
to me. And these are the areas that I look at. And we've gone over a lot of this already today. So if I'm in, so on that short overnight, I actually, and you see one of my reasons is spot gamma levels. So on that short overnight that I showed you, I actually got out of one. I had three on, and I got out of one at, where's that? Just to show you, you pay yourself when you're right. Let's see here, that's where my stop was at the time. And I put one, I can't really see it on there now. Where's that? There it is right there. So I, where, why did I put that there? Anybody tell me? Anyone look to the right and tell me why I put it there? It was one of my reasons that I just showed you on my trading the zone document. It's about gamma level. Very important level, right? I got out of one because this could have easily done that. And while I'm sleeping, do I, I can't tell you how many times I've had overnight trades on where it got almost to my target, like the blue lug was my ultimate target. It did hit it, but where it comes real close and then I wake up and it's all the way back up and it stopped me out, right? So I will get out in important areas. That's why you don't want to pigeon, pigeonhole yourself into trading one contract. Right? Trade micros <clears throat> so you can get out. That's do, do you adjust that 2%, um, Scott, uh, based on... Any other questions on that? Oh, back to liquidity. I didn't understand what he, what he meant on that. But I, th I think you kind of answered his question. Um, but, but, but back to the, the risk, um, the 2% risk. Do you adjust that 2% risk on based on recent performance? So if you go through like a rough patch, do you drop down to one and a half? I mean, as you, you could do it daily or you could do it weekly, right? So if I make like 20 grand this week, then you just put in 120. And then it tells you I can invest $2,400 on a trade. I've reset this for the start of this year, uh, for the P&L for this year. Um, and then it tells me, you know, what I can risk per, tra per trade. And then I'll also make this bigger some days, you know, on a trade, I'll put on 4% if it's an A plus trade. But you've got to remember, you cannot be, and there was just a setup in NQ, by the way, and we're through that zone that I just talked about. Um, but you can't be risking more than 5 6% of your account size in a day if you want to make it in this business because you're going to have bad days and you're going to blow out your account if you lose more than that. And I'm telling you, you guys have heard this rant too. Everybody uh, using Mike Tyson quote because it's the, the best. Everyone has a plan and they get punched in the mouth, right? Everyone's like, oh, yeah, if I, if I lose four, four grand a day, I'm done. Well, if you don't have that set up in a way where you have an automatic, like, your firm stops you out. And if you have a firm that won't do that, find a firm that does because it's going to save you an account. Trust me, eventually. Um, but if you have that in place, then you're just done for the day. Because if you think, if you possibly think you are that mentally, unless you are literally like a, a Buddhist uh, Zen dude that, you know, has complete control of your emotions at all times, you're going to have a situation where you get, especially if you're a trader, traders are very competitive. You're going to have a situation where you get so pissed off and you're like, screw this, man. I'm down four grand. I don't care. And you put in another and all of a sudden you're down eight grand. Now you're like, well, who cares now? My account's 11,000 bucks. What's another three grand? What's the difference now? You put on another trade and you lose 11 grand. Your account's done. I'm telling you, it will happen to you. It will happen to you. I don't know how else to put it. I will go into my, this is, I can already feel my stomach churning. Uh, the two, so I worked at a firm that was still supposed to stop me out. And they were so conditioned to let me talk my bullshit and part of my language, be like, uh, you know what? Okay, I settled down. Let, let, you know, Give me another 50 grand and I'll be done. They got to the point because I was making so much money back then. I would call, like they would, they would, you know, in the beginning I had $100,000. Let me draw this on real quick and then I'll get into the stories. I can't do two things at one time. You should see me trying to drive and talk to my wife. I, every time I lose, I, uh, you see me right now, I can't concentrate. Hold on. <laughs> I like miss it. I'll, I'll say one word or and I'll miss the exit because I can't do two things at one time. So there you go. There you go. 41 quarters, the bottom. Oh, no, I got some Bank of America chirps too. Great. All right, 45 down to 41. This probably started a little bit before there, but uh, yeah, I mean, the red line started here, but the swipe probably started this, but I'll just keep this right there for now. I, I don't want to confuse people. 1345 is good enough for right, right now. And then remember, take your spike. This obviously isn't correct. See how this is still spiking down here? It was 181. My threshold for NASDAQ is 150. So that was obviously the threshold. There's your bottom of your zone. That is accurate. Hopefully I don't miss this trade. All my talking, uh, 45 down to 41, right? So you come in here with the handy dandy spreadsheet. Um, 
three, four, five, three, four, one. RTY I sized for by RT, 159 contract. Forget about Russell, too. We'll go over there. And then ATR is 27.63 right now. Okay, so that's adapting to the current volatility. So if I want to remember, we're doing this trade. I'm not doing this trade on these webinars. If you wanted this trade, come to my room and you'll learn all about it. It's awesome. It's very active. It's more like a scalp trade. I hate using that word because I don't need to do that anymore because it's impossible. Tick for tick scalping. If you're trying to do that, you're going to blow out too. Good luck unless you can write computer programs. Um, so anyway, so if I want to trade this now, these are my prices. So these are the prices where it shows us the full ATR out of the zone. And that's going to determine whether this is a bullish or bearish setup, right? So until this gets above to 72.75 or below to 13.25, I don't know what setup this is. I don't know how I'm going to trade this, this zone. I mean, this um, item event. I do know that we are now through well it's close but this is almost through this important zone and what did i what did i just talk about a little bit ago how this market is accepting here now versus instant rejection instant rejection instant rejection that says to me that that's probably going to happen and now we have a volume event so i ra i could go short here aggressively with this volume event below this zone as soon as it breaks down out of here 110 percent of an atr i could i don't love that trade just because this is this next zone is so close, right? It's not even, it's, it's right here. So I'll, I'll still short it, but I, I wanna see ATR retest failure. Either way, I'm trading this, right? And then we'll look at our lugs here too quickly just to see where we're at here. All right, we're back at the blue lug here and uh, yes, by the way, this is just like anything else. If it accepts down here and just sits here, it's probably gonna bust through and build new lugs which would be good because then I can actually short and not worry about it bouncing off a lug. All right, so blue lug's not, it's, you know, what's that, 60 points away, 63 points away, and what are you seeing here? Guys, it's all about coming up with a story and then looking for value of events in that direction, right? Preferably, you can trade both ways, but I mean, for the bigger bigger moves, come up with your thesis, and when you get a match, a match, you're in. Here you go. What is this market doing right here? So ES is, ES is firmly in its, we just talked about this. This one is already, is gapped into it, right? And we're expecting the bottom of that. NASDAQ's just entering this and it's tried. So it kept hovering around here and now it's inside. What do we expect? And, and the point of control was way up here. And you can see this is where this launched up to, to led to this stuff. So now it's accepting, now that we have a volume event, it's a high, high probability, and that's all trading is, is probabilities that it's going to make it down to the bottom of this. <coughs> if it doesn't, so say this recovery, it, it could it could stop right here. This could turn into a bullish volume event and get out. Well, that's telling me something's up for my short-term thesis of, of zero, right? So you're adapting. But the, the thing is, guys, if you're just using this, you're... You, you're short, right? Like if, if I'm just staring at market profile and those zones, the bar chart zones, I'm short. I'm like, okay, we're in here. I'm getting in. We're through that zone. I'm, I'm getting in. Well, that's not all the information. That's why you need to be looking. I don't care how great of a market profile technician, how great of a bar chart technician you are. You don't have all the information. This is the missing piece, right? So if this market is bearish, this should not become a bullish setup, right? This should hold here, not get an ATR above here, and then move lower. And that's confirming my bigger picture thesis with real-time volume. And this would be one of my six distinct setups in my trading course, SI trading course. You can get it on my website or in the Bookman Marketplace. This would be a stop and hold, stop run that doesn't reject because this usually isn't real selling, right? It, Guys could stop into positions, but most of the time it's guys puking, right? If this sits here and doesn't, and then moves lower, well, then the big money's coming in to continue to push it and actually really selling this, right? And then we can also watch. I don't want to get too involved with the footprint because this thing has cost me so much money in my career, but it, there are opportunities to be using this correctly. We can watch to see if the sellers engage as well, and that would just be the big money pushing it lower because this is not big money. This is retail trader puke. That tells me it's not real selling as of right now, but if this holds, AKA the stop and hold setup, 
then that means I will take this trade off of that action. So now we're just going to watch. We just sit and wait to see how this reacts here. All right. I feel like I've been talking a whole bunch here. Um, so now, remember, I was going to go long off that retest failure. Well, this, guys, this is one of the reasons, too. You got a lot of guys that are like, okay, yeah, I understand the ATR, the retest. Why don't you just jump in in the zone? And, and, and Well, because I've learned the hard way just jumping in the zone. And even my course, my original course, says, you know, once it moves out of here, you can get in just outside of it. But I've learned the hard way, and you got to adapt in your trading, right, that if it can't do that, you know, I would just jump in on the first retest and then I, this would happen like it's happening right now. So that's why I wait for my conservative entry retest failure. And you can see I'm potentially avoiding myself a losing long here because this is pushing now down. Let's just see if we are officially in ATR below that zone. And that long idea is done. <clears throat> that's not a 12 ATR. I don't want to screw that up. Uh, I'm just using that for example. Price is 06.75. So if that market, there we are. So that is an ATR below this volume of that that I was going to go long off of, right? Disqualified. Now I wait for a new setup, which is fine because we're just at this blue log. I really didn't want to short. I tried the one short. I got stopped out. But now here we are. Sold stock stock sell GC 166 contracts. Trading gold especially stops the worst traders on the planet are in that market i can't it's literally stop runs every four seconds in that market um so if this moves a little lower this is going to draw new lugs and then it's go time especially i need a new setup now though too so but i do have a setup and you see what's happening here this is turning into potentially a stop and hold setup for nasdaq so now what i'm going to do i may miss this trade this is what i just talked about a little bit ago you have to determine if you want to get in aggressively. You could say, I, I love everything Scott just said. I want to get in as soon as it moves an ATR out of there, ATR at 10%. Or you wait for retest failure. This is a higher percentage trade, but you may not get the retest, and you're sitting there holding the, holding the bag. And you're like, oh, yeah, I didn't get short there, and I really knew this was going to break. That's what that's what you have to decide on your own. We're pretty close to this, this blue lug as well. So this is kind of a riskier trade too, because I, you guys know how important lugs are from what I've talked about. You know, guys, this is going straight here, right? I'm hoping we get one of these. I will short it and then I'll watch closely, but this this is, we watch this game every single week and it all it's all a big game. And if you think it's anything different than a manipulated game, you are sadly mistaken. But we know what's going on. That's the key. If you were just trading off bar charts and market profile, you don't know these these games. You don't know what the hell they're doing. We see what they're doing. My post yesterday in Twitter. How about this one? If you guys follow the Twitter, if not, I would watch that. I need to post a little more often. That's what I posted yesterday. Let's see. There you go. Massive CL sell. And by the way, it sold off like 150 points from here, 150 ticks. Hitting right now 1,600 contracts, something you can never see by staring at traditional chart software, just exactly what I just said. Nor does the big money placing these orders want you to know. But we do, using the incredible as I can from, from Bookman, right? So that's the point. You are seeing what is happening. So yeah, they're playing games. They're playing games with your money all day long. You can see the games. You're like, okay, I know, first of all, my, my, my view is bearish. This is going to end up being a bearish setup, most likely, and I know they're they're going to get their fills because they will push the market into their orders. I know this because this is the game I used to play as a scalper. I would load up the order book with thousand lots in the assets back then, where you could actually put those in and not get smushed. And then I would start getting short. And as it got closer to my orders, then I would step on the gas, sell some more, and they'd sell it right. Then guys would jump on my coattails and sell it right into my waiting bids, and I'd be out of my trade. Over and over and over, that was my game. That's how I made millions of dollars. That's simple. Do you remember me mentioning how simple? If you make it simple, how much better you'll do? That's all I did all day. <clears throat> so that's what's going on here too. If you don't think that's what's going on, watch book map for about a week and, and pick out the liquidity levels and you tell me if that's not what's going on. All right, so let's see the, uh, did we get an ATR below that zone first and foremost? <clears throat> so I can short this thing. Make sure this is still right. Twenty six point four seven. So it didn't touch the 
slash 74. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. 1450. Did not get down there yet. Right. What does that mean? Well, for me, for my conservative entry, I need to see that. Oh, I lost my drawer. Open my drawer. Oh, here it is. For me to see, I need to see that to go short. I could get in aggressively, but I'm not in this situation. What's, what's that number? Oh, I forgot. It's a uh, crude number at uh, 10 o'clock on Thursdays when Monday's a holiday. So that was a crude number. I didn't have a position on there. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just waiting here. This did not get a full ATR. Oil stock sells Pounds yeah, we're some soy oil. Um, here's Russell. I forgot to draw this. Hopefully, let's see if we can still get in a trade on this one. That was 200. That's the threshold. Threshold for Russell's 150. Stops and ice. This was threshold as well. And you can see this is one house. See this yellow line? That's one house. That basically started over here and then continued over here. It was probably over here too, but it's not showing that. But Regardless, this is the most recent setup. I'll draw my zone in it. I may be able to go to short this one too. <clears throat> so that, this was by ice, and you can see this came all the way down to here, potentially lower. I'll draw that first and then I'll edit it. Make sure I got all the prices. I gotta go a little lower, you can see, right? It still is happening here. I've been supposedly working on a feature where you I've been asking for it for years, you just click on the damn spike and it draws its own for you. That would save me about eight hours a day, it feels like. All right, so there you go. <clears throat> so let's see if this got an ATR below here and I'll short this puppy too. <clears throat> let's put it in its own prices. Let me turn this down a little bit. All right, so the bottom of that zone was 36.5 or 1836.5. <clears throat> the zone is 38.3. PR is 4.16. That means every five minutes is moving about 42 ticks. Very important. You're using static stops. So now, for this, for that to be a broken ice setup, one of my six setups, it needed to get an ATR below that zone. Did I get an ATR below? Got down uh, right around 1832.1. What is the price for an ATR? That was 1832.3. Oh, what, do you, what do you know? <laughs> Guys, I, I'm telling you, man, this is just, it's over. And like, this is the one, this is one of the strategies we have in my room. It, it's, it's, it's uncanny. So this was, I mean, to literally almost the exact tech. ATR, retest. Why do you think we're using ATR in the room? There you go. So now this is an officially a bearish setup. Do I just go short right here? No, I need to see this, this, then that. Then I go short. 110% of an ATR, because it's showing me it can push outside the ATR, that price would be 19, right? So I could put on 5.5, obviously I'll round up because I can't put on five and a half contract in the big one. So we'll put on six at 19. There you go. So that's locked and loaded. There's potential I'll be short two markets here and then we can play highway to hell or free falling, which I will do. Make it, you guys, you gotta laugh. You gotta laugh when you're trading, or you'll lose your mind like me. All right, so nothing else has happened here. We did not get the ATR below here retest, so I'm still waiting for that. Uh, yes, this was disqualified as a, a, as a trading setup for me for short. Nothing new is coming in here either. <clears throat> so now we just wait. We go, and the thing I need to look at for Russell is to see, make sure I'm not shorting into a blue lug. Which is not advisable. I gotta update my obviously my market profiles. I don't trade this market that often, but I do trade it. So quite a ways away to the blue lug. 
1821.4. No problem putting it short on, right? You can see here too, this is really what you want to see if you're looking for extended moves. You see how the relative volume is starting to spike a little bit? So if you see yellow bars at the bottom here, it means it's over two to one normal for this time period. That's telling me the big money's starting to play. That could be, you can see how this was very active here. So guys, the other thing too is, you know, when I'm drawing these zones, well, this, this is the same principle, right? So you can see here, especially if you're watching these markets, I mean, this is overnight, but if you're watching and all of a sudden you start to see this, these are traded traders firing off, right? And you can draw this as one big zone, right? Like that is really important. And when it moves out of here, it usually leads to the big move, right? This one looks like it came back, but let's see. No, sorry. So yeah, this... What do you think, guys, just imagine, what do you think is happening here, right? Somebody was selling it, well, somebody was buying it passively. Someone was aggressive, and then someone was buying it, somebody was selling it aggressively. Either way, set up and crude, we could trade that too. Um, either way, this is the important area. Just like the zones I draw, this is important too. This is much bigger ranges, but this is important. When it breaks out of here, whoever was long in here says, oh crap, and get me out, right? It's it's simple, not easy. It's simple if you think of it in that terms because that is what is happening. Dumb down your trading and just look at what drives market volumes, relative volume and volume events. You use that with a thesis, you have an edge. You have the ultimate edge. I don't know if I mentioned that. All right, so I'm fine going short this on top of that, right? We got all that fuel that this hasn't even broken, really broken from that area. So this could be a whopper. Let's look down here. Let's see what's blowing. You can see there's nothing here. This is my zone for RTY. I left this in because this was this led to this up move. And this was this is where this huge move started. Many times when a market moves straight through it, this one didn't really move straight through it, but it did hold and we gapped down. That's why I left it. Actually, I looked at it when I drew this this morning. That's why I left this because I could have actually deleted this, uh, but it didn't kind of respond here. It did hold here a little bit this day and then it kind of launched out of here. But I, I'm still leaving it because this is where we gap down from, right? But anyway, there's nothing here to down here. And then what do you have here? This is the this market is very, very, very high percentage. This is coming down here, especially with what we see with that volume, that relative volume. That is the fuel this needs to push all the way down here, right? So it would not surprise me one bit. Actually, I expect that. And let's actually, while we're on here and nothing's happening, let me show you drawing the market profile. So these are individual days. When these overlap by more than 50%, you can merge them and make a composite. So this is a cup. My goodness, man, what is going on in the grains? Don't they know I'm trying to do a webinar? Um, so these are individual days. When they, when they overlap, you can merge. So like this value area, which is just 70% of the trading day, the high value, um, the high of the value area, the low, and the point of control. Point of control is where the most trade occurred, and you can see that. That's like a high volume, you know, high volume node of a, this is more of an exact price, but that's like a high volume node of a balance area that we talked about earlier. These, This one did not merge that, so I don't merge that, or did not overlap that. This one did, this was Monday, and then this one did, all three of these did. I will merge that, first and foremost, so I like playing this game. It feels like, whoops, I didn't want to do that. What did I just do there? Oops. See, there. Feels like I'm playing Pac-Man. You guys are old enough to remember Pac-Man. Then this day, definitely overlapped that day, so I'm gonna merge that as well. And now you can see this composite now basically overlapped that by, that's pretty close to 50%, so I'm gonna merge that. And now you have a solid, very important value area. Now I draw her. This is what these blue zones come from. There you go. So right now it's kind of bouncing off this prior one. Actually, I got to draw this too. Let's merge this one. All right. So that's a two dayer. The more days you have, obviously, the more important it is. And this one up here is like five days or more. Whatever I just did. I can't remember what I just did. But so this was a prior one that it's obviously responding to. That was here. You guys, look how powerful these are, right? So if you can find volume events at the corner, these are one of the five right here. 
right here. I pay myself with the market makes money available to me. Market profile, composite, highs, lows, points of control. So they're just they're places you can initiate trades, obviously, as well. You can see this day. I mean, that's pretty much to the exact tick. So you can imagine if it comes down and you get a volume event down here, what a great trade that is, right? You could just trade off of these by themselves, but you just, like I said earlier, you don't have all the information. If you have a real-time volume event, then you really have an edge. That's what it's all about, is coming up with an edge and trading it consistently. Not by the seat of your pants, trying to catch every move. Why can't I find the bottom of the scroller of this? Hold on. Any questions? Say I'm like trying to find uh, this thing. I was kind of looking forward way. to your story there. I don't think you finished it. Um, it was <laughs> oh, you're going to make me tell that story. Yeah. Do, you, do you remember which one I mean about? I think it was about risk management mm -hmm. in your early trading career. Was yeah. it? Thanks a lot. Thanks for bringing that back. I was just <laughs> starting to settle down. Actually, I'm going I'm to throw you off here and draw this zone first. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to turn off. So this is the CBD. I look at that. I'm, um, I look at them both, but I take it off of Bookmap a lot just because there's just too much going on down here, but you can bring it in and out, right? But that's the same thing as this. And, uh, and it's awesome because this is a different data feed. This is the Denali data feed through um, through uh, Sierra Chart. It's great to see when they match up. It just means you're getting accurate data. So that's basically this right here. It's the same thing, right? You can see, you guys, look how powerful these levels are. I'm going to trade some cattle. I mean, look, look at that. They're, they're un, I'm telling you, it's the, it's the second most powerful thing I've ever traded with next to Bookmap. It, they're ridiculous. It's just it's silly how they react. All right, um, <clears throat> so let's draw this real quick. I thought I heard a volume in here. Was it this? Yeah, let's, so look at this coming in. So granted, this wasn't threshold. It's pretty close, 140, but then you had this, 120, this, right? I don't know why it's not drawing. Uh, this has got to be one house. Let's see here. Well, that's why, because I don't have this set up. Let's make, let's make this on so you can see them. I'm really surprised this isn't showing as one house. Hold on. Uh, Make I'm surprised that's not one house, but regardless, this is a pre-market zone. You could say, hey, real surprising, this is where it bounced from. Like, this is literally from way back when. And guys, it's amazing. This is what I'm talking about. You think this is coincidence this market came back? Not that I had a trade on here, but do you think it's coincidence that it came back and fire right off of there? That was over here. That's that. Probably would behoove you to know where this information, where, the, where this is occurring. That's what I'm talking about, having all the information. Um, it bounced off here again, but I'm going to draw this here. So I'll take my bubbles off. So this started, and that was 54. I'm going to start that right I may have to adjust it, obviously. It's good just to always just draw the zone and then you can edit, you can pull the lines up and down. Let's just make this a different color so it's not confusing me with the other one. I did two different colors there, I'm colorblind, sorry about that. All right, so I wanna incorporate all this, right? Boom, boom, boom. This has to be one house. I don't know why it's not drawing a line, but comes all the way up to here. It's actually still coming in. So this is a rather large zone. I mean, you could draw and wait for a concentrated volume event, or you can draw this all. I'm going to draw it all for a position trade. Yeah, sometimes it's subjective. Most of the time, that's pretty straightforward. But sometimes you get stuff like this where you get waves of buy ice, and you're like, well, what the hell do I do with that? They're not threshold, but they're all right on top of each other. Well, I suggest making it one big zone, right? This is a 50-point zone, 50-tick zone. Right, so we'll let this develop, but I mean, you can't ignore this, right? So you, it's either you don't trade it or you make a big zone, right? You just gotta cut down your risk, like we've been talking about. So we'll come back to that. 
now this short may be disqualified if this got an ATR above this zone. That's what disqualifies it for me. So we didn't look at that price. Let's make sure. Let's see who that is. And I'll tell my story to get me mad. Just telling you someone's going to get a verbal lashing then because I'm going to be upset. 4.23. I get verbal lashings in my room all the time. Half, I mean, they have to teach people to stop being morons. All right? It's like you come in my room, you're not going to get sugar-coated. Hey, great trade, man, if you do something wrong. I'm going to say why. Even if you put a winning trade up, I say, why did you do that? If you give me some nonsense answer, I'm going to say that you got lucky. Right? But that's what you guys want. You don't want me sitting here patting. You want to make money or you want me to pat you on the back? What's going to benefit you more? All right, so the uh, ATR to disqualify that is uh, 1843. Did we get up to 1843? Eh, let me guess, it's the exact tick. Hey, look at that. Real surprising, isn't it? Guys, it is on, I'm sorry, one tick. <laughs> it's, it's just, I, I watch it all day, every day, and hundreds of times, and it still just amazes me. Look, look at that. I'm gonna consider that an ATR, this is disqualified. There's one tick away, fine. And that's fine. I just wait for a new setup. I'm not playing this as a long setup because it's got an ATR below before, so it's fine. Move on. Move on to the next setup in another market. So you guys can see how the algos are just taking your cash. If you're trading right now, you are getting whipsawed to death. You got whipsawed to death here, and you're getting whipsawed to death here. That's what we're trying to avoid. That's what we will avoid most of the time if you are placing your stops outside of these areas. So this definitely got an ATR above there, so that short idea is disqualified as well. What does that mean? It just means that not, I'm waiting for something new, right? Guys, this is what's called guys and girls being patient, right? Like you're just waiting. I'm waiting to see something for, for my my trading, my trading style, my setup. If I don't see it, I just don't throw on trades. You just throw on trades, you're going to lose money. This is These, these are not small moves, right? Basically because the ATR is elevated. You're putting on trades, You unless you're holding for 20 points, you're most likely getting website out of these trades, right? That's why I wait for volume events. This market's just not making up its mind. The big money's not playing right now, so that's why the algos are taking over and taking your money. Um, I don't really want to get into the grain stuff. I'll, I'll take a quick look at crappy corn, but because I heard some good size in there. Let's see. Guys, it does not matter what market you are trading. It's all the same. If you know the thresholds, they react to the volume events the same way. Why? Because they're humans. It's the same stuff. Even if they're algos, like trading off of this stuff, they humans make them, right? So it's like, it's just like why technical analysis, work, analysis works, right? Like these important areas, because it's human reaction. Read all about technical, what a technical analysis is. It's how humans react in certain situations. What do you think trading these zones are? It's how humans react in certain situations when they're loaded up, right? It doesn't matter what market you're trading. That's definitely threshold, right? So like, like look, it's just, here we go. Here is another one. This is actually a, it's like a two ATR trade. Hopefully my room caught this, but I don't think many people are trading corn in there. But doesn't matter what market it is. Here you go, bring the bubbles back. I can almost promise you this is like this. Uh, you know, to guess, I'll show you. Five minute ATR, a whopping 1.25 points. That's why I don't trade this thing most time, right? But you can see, uh, this looks like a huge move. It was, <laughs> it was three sets. But regardless, that's two ATRs. It's trying to come back here. That's the game. So if you want to short this, this is definitely, that is a bearish setup. Wait. Take that back. Something new happened in here, I think. 400 is my threshold in here. That was not quite threshold, but it's close. Soy oils for ZL. 151 contracts. Soy oil, same thing. I don't care what you're trading. But anyway, this could be a bear setup. Uh, you could draw that. It's close enough. I'm not trading this market. I just wanted to show you guys the example. Like, here we go. Nothing's going on here, and then I'll tell my stories. But I just want to show you. It doesn't matter. You are doing yourself a disservice if you are what, staring at crappy ES all day long. Widen your horizons, come up with playbooks, and look for certain scenarios and just wait across markets. So this is a lot. You can see there's a huge stop run here. This was a stop and hold. We just talked about that, right? So it was 
Dumb Money Puke, and actually this is, looks like a double whammy. I, I'm using 150 in this market. So you had the Dumb Money Puke into the waiting hands of the smart money, but it doesn't look like they were that smart today. Guys, the buy ice and sell ice isn't always right, but that's another setup in itself. Because when they're wrong, that leads to extended moves as well. So that was that, I think. Yeah, it came down a little more. So if you learn how to draw zones on this webinar as well, that was that. Shockingly, it came back and came real close to testing the zone, like it almost always does, and now you have a new setup, right? So you could trade this. If you want to pop over to soy oil, you could draw your zone. It says 236. Somebody's still buying it. Trying to, anyway. That's your zone. Figure out the ATR. I'll even show you quickly, so you know. 0 0.16, 0 0.17. Whatever that is, I don't trade this as often, but it's, it looks like 17 ticks, right? This, look, this looks like crude. It looks like it trades like crude as far as uh, tenths of a tick. So it looks like the ATR is 17 ticks. So meaning if you wanted to trade soy oil, you would wait for this for this newest volume event in ATR, right? meaning 17 ticks, 17 ticks. If you got an aggressive, you jump in just outside 17 ticks. It's all the same stuff, guys. It does not matter. Let's see how many times I can say guys on this webinar. All right, any questions before I get upset? Uh, yeah, we've, we've got a question about your thresholds for the on-chart stops and icebergs for ES and NQ. What are my thresholds for ES and Q? Yeah, for the on-chart stops and ice. On-chart, you can make them less, you know, because you want to see you want to see them. Um, you know, I, let's see what oh, I have. My... Iceberg buys EL, 152 contracts. Let's see what I have mine set at. Actually, I have this one at normal. So I just put it at the normal threshold of 700. But you can make them less just so you can see events. You know, if you have them less, you're just going to see a lot of crap on your chart. That's the problem. I, I, I'm trying not to see, a, you know, when I turn off some of these icons as well. Right? So when you're on on, on chart here, I, yeah, I, I don't care about cancellations. Right? I mean, it could be important for some strategies. I don't care if they cancel it. I don't care if it's detection. I want to see it executed. And if it's still active, and if it traded, I mean, trading, so the way this shows this is that it'll show if it traded and then if it's still active and then if it fully executed. I don't know why it's actually not showing though. <laughs> you should be seeing that on here. Uh, oh, it's just because my threshold, so it's a lot, watch this. Let's, let's, let's lower this threshold. Still don't see the icons though, let's see. You just see a lot more numbers, right? This is why I, I bring them up. You should be seeing the actual, oh yeah, here they are. I don't know what I'm doing. Here they are right here, right? So it's showing you <clears throat> E-means executed. So these are just smaller ones that I don't care about, right? So somebody executed a 105, but that's the finishing of it, right? So it'll so say it like, EL, 151 trying to find a good example here. Um, why it's not showing me the transact, but it'll show like the T for transacted. So it could keep coming down. So if this was like a buy ice, which it was, but it actually looks like sell ice. So whatever it is, buy ice or sell ice, as it touches it, transacts, transacts, transacts. And when they're finally done, shows it executed. Like what kind of, that's incredible information to know, right? Or if it's still in there, you can see like, you'll see instances where it'll be like here, you'll see transacted, it'll show like 100, transacted 100. And the market does that, but you know it's still there because you didn't, you never saw that E. And then it comes back down there, still there, still there, still there. Guys, that this is the information. This is the missing piece in your trading. I'm telling you. But anyway, um, you know, I have it set higher just because I just I can't handle too many things on my chart. I got enough on here. So that's 700. And then it stops. I think I, I stops are a little. I, I have a little less, so it helps me draw them better. Let's see. Yeah, I got those at 100. That's probably too little. <clears throat> Any other questions? Uh, f for NQ as well, sorry. Do you have the. Are you guys liking the whipsaw? You like that? That's why you don't trade until you see something worthwhile. Q. This is a, I don't know why this resets like this. You put these on, you know, or maybe too much.
So no, guys, just go to the book, man. Don't ask, start asking me about all this. I'm gonna try to put some of this in my new course, but it gets really, I'm not a, I'm not a developer, right? I, I, and this is just, this is like too much for me, for my brain, right? Let's just put 10. Individual or aggregated. I don't know why it keeps going to this automated, automatic. No idea. But you can read all about that. Again, this isn't that my my the important for me, the most important is the subchart, right? This just helps me see, helps me draw my zones. I can kind of see what's going on. This is what you want to trade off. You do not want to be drawing zones off of the on chart because it could be convoluted, right? Like I just would give an example where it touched, it touched, it touched, it's going like 150, 80. I want to see concentrated volume events down here, right? So you can use this. Obviously, it's important to see if it's one house, see the stop runs, help you draw your zones. I would not be drawing zones off the on chart, use the sub chart. That's what I do. You can do whatever you want, it's your money. Great, thank you. Because this is why guys and girls, guys, 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 have said it 5,000 times this webinar. This is why I wait for, I, not you're subjecting yourself to that. Was your I like to put on trades and risk 10 points to make 20? Well, then you probably were stopped out about 28 times during, during this whipsaw nonsense. But once again, what is going on here? It's whipside, but it's not doing anything. We are accepting. Now we're actually accepting in this zone too. So this whole area is important. And you see it's accepting. You see how instantly rejected here? Gone. Right? Gone. Gone. Here. What's it doing? It's kind of just sitting here. I'm telling you, when this breaks down here, and this looks just like Russell, does it not? Going to gravitate right to this stuff. Very likely, you do have one here that you can draw that it may react at that high volume node at least initially. You could draw that. I don't draw the high volume nodes because it's just too many too many things on my chart. But I'm expecting at least this may happen today. Would not surprise me one bit. It could do a juke move first because it usually does. But that's my bigger picture view. I, I will still trade longs if I get the setups. I just don't have the setups. Hey, look where we're headed down to an ES here. Who wants to bet this gets filled right now before we get off the webinar? Anybody? Anyone want to bet me? I'll bet you we trade this <clears throat> before we get back up here. Who wants to bet around the golf, Arizona style? Not cheap, by the way. Waste management's in a few weeks. I, got, I heard a T, round of TPC, which is not even that great of a course. That's where they play the waste management open. 650 bucks. <laughs> Go to Pebble Beach for that. All right, uh, any other questions? And then I'll start telling stories. I think we're all up to date now, Scott. All right, um, let's quickly here. And crude is actually breaking below this most current zone that I drew. This threshold, let's just put this in real quick because I may want to trade this. Uh, 27 down to 12. 80, 27 down to 12. Wow, how is that? Did I already put that in? Or is that the same? Wow, that's amazing. I think that's the same zone as earlier. I didn't put this in. I don't think. I might have. I told you guys I had no short term memory. All right, so ATR below there would have been <clears throat> uh, 7980. That is 7980. Right, so what does that mean? That means this is now a bearish event. This was able to push an ATR below there. How's that buy ice feeling right now? That can't be feeling really good. So many times, this is what causes this reject. So the, these big players are like, oh crap, I guess we were wrong. And then they'll, they'll wait, test the waters. This is exactly what I used to do. I, and then I would start buying more and more and I'd push it and I'd have my orders. i put my offers back in to get the hell out of the trade. So when I came back up there, I'd be filled. That's what ATR retest does many, 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 many times. So it'll come up here. These guys that were long will be like, yeah, okay, I guess that wasn't the right idea. Let me get out. And that leaves the next wave down. Right? So I will trade that to the short side. Let's just take a look at our lugs real quick. Hey, look, hey, look what look what worked up there. You guys ever see this? Magical, magical lugs. It's just I can't. This is like watching the ATRs all day long. It just amazes me every time. Right. Yeah, you could trade these on their own, but if you have vibe events, or you can imagine how much the bearish vibe events, how much more stronger they are. So anyway, this is just bouncing off baby lug and VWAP. 
Uh, so let's see what happens here. Here's definitely going for the retest. Hey, you ever see this one? You ever see the one ATR? I've shown it like five times already on this webinar. The markets will move one and go back. This is a very active trade. We're doing this in my room, but you gotta be on top of this or it'll go two and come back. This is like a magnet, it's just like liquidity. So there's your retest. Now I will put a potential short in. My prices are in. I obviously got 79.80 to make that a bearish setup. Now I will go 110% of an ATR to take my position. I could put on 2.35. I'll just put on two. I don't really love this area. Let's just take one little peek here. Yeah, see how we're, this is not a really great trading area to, as far as bounce off that zone, bounce off that zone, right? So this is not a great trading area. You could just say, I don't even want to trade in here because you're probably going to go through some torture. If I put this trade on, I am probably going to go through some tor torture. <clears throat> well aware, but I like torture. I like upsetting myself. So let's put it on 79.77. I'll just put on two since I know I'm gonna get whipsawed to death. So you could say, I don't want to short right, you see how it reacted to the zone again, right? You could put it, sacrifice 15, 17 takes to put it below that zone. But I'll just take it, ATR retest failure. Not loving this trade at all. I'm just trying to put on some damn trade for you guys before. It... Yeah, I wonder if we're gonna get this liquidity. All right, we're getting close to the end. Um, <clears throat> so best, back to the risk rules. If you do not have risk rules, you are going to blow out your account eventually. I'm telling you, I, and it can't be in your head. You have to have some kind of stop gap where your trading firm, you, you let them know, uh, I want my stop limit to be, if you, you know, if you got a $10,000 account, you, sh you should not be risking more than 600 bucks in a day. I know it sounds pathetic, but that's why you want to, this is my other rant that I can go on. That's why you want to go to my website. Yeah, I get discounts to all this stuff, but highly, highly recommend you use this. This is Apex. Go in there. It gives you all the different, um, <clears throat> the different, I use the 150. I think that's the best value. <clears throat> so that's what it is a month. But if you put in my code, you get the, uh, it's half, right? And they have some 80% deal going on now too. So put in my code, you get 80% off. Well worth it to practice. Even if you're not practicing, you get that's somewhere on here. Pulsini. What is it again? Let's see. Hold on. Sorry. Um, should say it on here. It's Pulsini 50. I thought it was right there smack dab in, the, in your face. Oh, you know what? It might be on the main. No. I don't know why this isn't where it's... Oh, here it is. Right here. 80% off. So anyway, guys... Girls, there's no reason to be one if you're struggling, if you're new. I have like five of them that I'm doing that I'm trading different strategies. Why do I need to risk my own money? Especially if I'm trading, because I want to test stuff out real time instead of just like looking at it after the fact, like, oh yeah, that one will work. I, I put it on real time, but I don't want to risk my, my own real money on that while I'm trying stuff out, different ideas, stuff like that, right? So use this and you're not gonna, you'll at least react the right way because most guys are like, when they're trading, on a simulator, they don't react the same way because they're not risking as much, right? Or they're not risking anything, so they just let stuff run there. If you blow out the account, it's going to cost you money, so you're going to react the right way. So anyway, and then if you do well with your strategy, you know, say you want to try this stuff out the way I'm trading. If you do well, then you're funded. So then, then you're not trading your money anyway. It's just a no-brainer to me, and I'm using it myself. I've been the reason I started using it in the beginning is I had a lot of guys asking me about it. I did it. I qualified. Blew out a couple times because it is a trailing fight. It, it gets tricky. You can read all about it. I'm not going to get into it right now. But <clears throat> it's not that tricky. It's not like some of the other ones that are complete nonsense. They're just trying to take your money nonstop. But anyway, I qualified, got funded, got paid. So they are legit. I put my name on it. It wouldn't be on my website if it was not legit. <clears throat> Again, all this stuff, there's discounts to everything. Book map. That's a Global Plus that you're doing anyway. This, Spot Gamma, that's not a discount, but this, you can get an extra free. We didn't talk about this today. The Tick Strike, actually, I didn't have that on. Let's just get a little torture before we hop off here. Um, it's just like an audio, and then Trader Sync, that's what I'm using. They're been struggling a little lately with the, they're switching over to some new cloud, but I'm not going to get into that either, either anyway. So back to the, <clears throat> you need to set your risk for the day. If you have a, Let's just say you have a hundred thousand dollar account. You should not be risking more than five, six thousand dollars in a day. Hey, by the way, look where we're headed. 
there you go. Here's This is why this is important to have, too. It just gets really annoying when you have trades running against you. Um, you need to have that set. Set it up with your broker. If your broker doesn't do it, find a new broker. There's plenty of competition out there. You do not need a broker that won't do that for you. And it's in their best interest to do it for you anyway. I've never understood why brokers don't offer that because they want you in the game. How do you think they make their money? On, their, on your commissions. Well, guess what? They're not making commissions on you if you're not trading. So find a broker that will stop you out. Put that in place. If I lose five grand, I'm out. So back to my story, right? I had, when I was trading, when I started making serious money, my drop dead with my trading firm. We had a risk manager too. This makes the story even more upsetting. My drop dead was $100,000, right? So I could trade as much as I want. I could trade up to 3,000 contracts, but if I had $100,000 $100, loss, done for the day. Done for the day, right? Well, there were, or not 300, sorry, 100, 100 grand. So there would be some days I'd hit it, <clears throat> they shut me off. I go to click on my stuff. This is what your should broker should do. You go to click on it, nothing happens, right? Apex has the same type of thing. Um, so then I just have to, I'd be done. And I go home, I, you know, get my mind straight. And, and so many times I would just, I'd go home and I wake up the next morning and I'd be like, what in the hell was I thinking? Like, what was I doing there? Thank God I got stopped out. You know, they, they it only cost me a hundred grand. Well, it got to the point when I started making serious money, like millions, where I could basically tell them what I wanted to do, right? I was the big trader of the firm. I could say whatever I, I made. So I would call them up. I'd go take a walk. I'd come back. I'd be like, okay, I settled down. Give me another 100 grand. If I lose that, I'm done for the day. So then that that was a routine for a while. Then it got to the point where I would go down 100 grand. I'd have a trade on. I'd have like, you know, 1,500 contracts and it would be ripping in my face. I'd be down $180,000 and they would, now they'd just make a phone call. And they'd be like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Just leave me alone. Hang up. And they let me go, right? So not only could I not stop myself because I was so pissed off, that's what I was trying to explain to yourself, but explain to you guys, everyone has a plan and they get punched in the mouth. Yeah, when I'm when I'm like this and I'm perfectly sane and, and calm, I can say, oh yeah, I, I'm going to lose 100 grand. If I'm done, if I hit that, I'm done for the day. Most people can't do that, especially if they're pissed off, right? So it got to the point where they would not stop me and I had literally, literally two different days. I probably have these on tape. I don't even want to find them, but I'll play them for you maybe one day for comedy for you. It won't be some comedy for me. It's when you hear the amounts. But the first day, the first time it happened, they called me, done 100 grand. Just, I got it. Hang up. I lost $800,000 in literally about 12 minutes. $800,000. To the day, one month later, to the day, both, and what's so funny about both of these days, they were both on a Friday, both of them I was leaving for a wedding, both times, I can remember distinctly, this was like 2004. Very next month to the day, it was a Friday, lost another $800,000, same exact scenario. You'd think my firm would have learned the first time. So I lost $1.6 million on those two, two days when I should have only lost $200,000. That is $1.4 million more I should have in my bank account. I don't know about you, but I, I can use another $1.4 million in my bank account, right? This is sickening. That makes me sad. That makes me mad. I'm telling you guys this so you learn from my pain. That's why I have the trade room. Learn from my 25 years of, of pain and, and good, obviously, but pain so you don't have to have that happen to you because it will happen. Not that you're going to lose $800,000, but you're going to blow out an account if you don't have things in place you know, before before the shit hits the fan, pardon my language, right? So I'm telling you, if there's one thing you take from this webinar, it's you win. Get off this webinar and call your broker if you're trading real money and say, put me, stop me out at 6% of my account or give them a monetary value. I'm begging you, right? So I was going to, there was one more other thing that I, now I lost my train of thought, but probably because I want to break something now by talking about that. So $1.4 million, if I just would have stopped at 200 grand, I would have more on my, on my account. And oh, so that year, I still ended up making one, what was it, one point? I think it was 1.4, actually. So I would have made 3 million bucks instead of 1.4, just because of two days that I didn't follow my damn rules, right? Please, I'm begging you, it's gonna happen if you do not have something in place. It will, without a doubt. Unless you're, again, if you're a Buddhist Zen on here, I'd like to meet you. But other than that, it's very likely that's going to happen to you too. So it's all relative, but you're going to lose your mind at some point because it gets, it feels very personal. You, I mean, I could play all the time. I've been doing this for 20 plus years and I still feel like I'm being manipulated because I am. You are. That's what I've been telling you guys this whole webinar. 
one, you have to condition yourself to that, but then you have to have stops, stop gaps in place where you, when you lose your mind, you're, you're not blowing out your accounts. So that's my one little rant for today. There's many more. I do them all day long. If you want to hear me complain, you can come to my trade room. Good things too, play music and stuff like that. But other than that, um, please learn from my mistakes. Any other questions, Sam, before I... Yeah, painful lesson there. Um, I mean, I've, I've just got one quick follow-up question on that, um, if you've got time. Uh, I just wanted yeah. to ask, like on the flip side, you know, as traders, we know it's kind of a journey. It's a gradual progression, learning over time as you gain experience. But did you ever have like an aha moment or, or what was the kind of the biggest single thing you did that made like a big leap forward in your progress? Well, the initial aha moment was understanding the order flow back then uh, in the in the dome, right? So I I was learning like just from staring at this. Back then, guys, there was no education, none. For it's right when everything went electronic. I was I was working at the board of trade. I was an art clerk for a broker. You know, like the trading places where they're doing the hand signals. That's what I would do working for a broker. And then I went from doing that to the trading firm. There was no education. They literally, I'm not kidding. The very first day, this is another ridiculous story. The very first day, they sit you down and they're like, everyone's trading uh, the E-mini S&P or the E-mini NASDAQ. Which one do you want to trade? I'm like, uh, I don't know. Give me the E-mini S&P. Like literally, it was like that. Sit down. It was just like that. I just was staring. I'm like, okay. Um, I was trading one lots. Like my limit was like one or two. Right? That's how I started, guys. I did not. I was not given a thousand lots to start trading. That should be motivational for you that you can get up to being a thousand lot trader. Yeah, you have to have the backing or the financial means. But I wasn't. I was trading one lots to start, and I I was just putting in one lots and getting out, putting in my very first day, putting in just one lots, and I was not holding them. I was getting in in and out. I lost twenty five hundred dollars trading one lots my first day. I was about to get fired after my very first day. Right. So then I went through. Months of that, I went my very my first two months. I did not make money one day trading. Thank God I had a friend that got me in the firm that because I was about to get fired, like I told you, after the first day. But anyway, it got to the point where I was down probably I'd say ten or twelve grand, which is a lot of money trading one lots. I was about to get fired. I went on a, I went on a, a fishing trip with my buddy. I'm not a big fisherman, but it was a good time to get away and clear my mind. He recommended I read Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. We haven't talked about that for a while. We'll do that next webinar possibly. Read that. Got my head on straight, came back, and 9-11 happened. The, the markets were closed for a week. I jumped into the DAX, German DAX, because I needed to trade something and try to learn what the hell I was doing. Then I started seeing these, these, these same patterns, like with the order flow back then, just staring at the gnome. And then I just started to learn like how the market would react to the big orders and being first in, first out. And this is all different stuff back then. But I found an edge and it literally light went on and I went into my, 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 the owner of the firm's office. And mind you, I was about to get fired and I just started making money, right? Then I started, then I got even, I think I was up like maybe five or 10 grand. Now think of the boldness of this. This is how, when I know I have something, how certain I am, kind of like this stuff that I'm trying to, to pray to you guys to, to, to understand. I knew I had figured it out. I knew I had it. I went in there. I was up like 10 grand. The top trader at the time had made $1.8 million or $2 million the year before. I went in there. I said, I will bet you, make a bet with you that I'm your number. This was 2002. Um, January 2002, I said, I'll bet you I'm your number one trader by the end of this year. Here you go. Surprise, 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 surprise. Um, so I made him a bet that I was number one trader. I was up $10,000. And I did it. I made uh, my 2002, I made 2.4 million bucks, was the top trader in the firm. That's how certain I was. So leap forward to this. Same thing, guys. The minute I was out of trading, I was not trading from 2013 to 2016, 17, was out of the business. Dr. Brett Steenbarger wrote the book in hands training performance. That's on here as well. You guys can get this book. It's a great book as well, but I'm in here afterward. My heights and my downfall. This is right at the beginning of my downfall. If you want to read that, that's really fun too. Um, but he recommended, hey, there's this new uh, software called Bookmap. You want to check it out? It reminds me of what you used to do because he had to sit behind me for a year to watch how I traded to put me in the book to get ideas or whatever. So he recommended Bookmap. The minute I saw this thing, and this was before this stuff, I said, I'm back. Right, just based on the liquidity and everything else. Then they came out with the, the sub chart and I said, this is the most important, this is the most strongest edge I've ever seen in my life. So 
guys, when you like that, that's what I'm saying. When I know I've got something, I know I've got it. And I'm, I'm begging you to please understand if you are not using this information, you do not have all the information. You just don't. You don't. I don't care what, how great of a trader you are. You could be much, much better by understanding how the market reacts to this. So quickly, I just will draw this zone and I will trade it. I hope it's to the downside, but we'll take a quick look at where we're at. And I know there's another guy going off here. We already started, I think. That was that, and you heard it. 1,300, 1,400 stops, right? So that is a major puke. Let's take a look where we're at. <clears throat> And here we are. This is an area. We already know this is not potentially real selling, right? It's usually just guys puking. We're in this very important zone. This could bounce right here. I will play this to the long side if it gets out of here. And I could play this long aggressively just because I know how important this zone is where this launched from, right? Directional conviction, buying tail, buying tail, out of here. That led to a 100 plus point move. Here we are again, right? So this should react. Well, if I do put on a long and I lose, or even if I don't put anything on, if this melts right through this zone, that is telling you something, watch out below. This should react. It'll probably screw the shorts, probably come up into these. That's even better short. But I will let, but these are all ideas. Now I let how the market reacts to this volume event tell me what I'm gonna do. And we've gone over this this whole webinar. So that's your zone. Wait for ATR below or above to determine what it is and then trade it. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. All right, guys, I'm out. I'm out of gas. It feels like I've been talking for about five hours. So um, thanks, Sam, for yeah. having me. And I will see you guys next uh, Thursday. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Really good stuff there. And um, thanks for sharing your experience. Um, great stories with the valuable lessons. Uh, you've also demonstrated live just how important these ATRs are. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye on those guys. Um, if you feel like Absolutely. you've learned something, please hit that like button. And... Um, Reach out to Scott if you have more questions. Uh, but we'll see you all again next week. And thank you for watching. Appreciate it. I'll see you guys uh, next Thursday or in my trading room. Thanks. Cheers. Bye-bye.